My name is Joe Peroni, and this is the Rise Above Project. And today, I want to talk about an idea. And this idea is that if you live your life correctly, that even your own death should not stop you from your goals and your mission. Now, the first time I heard this, it was from uh, one of my mentors, uh, Steve Mahalik. He was Mr. America and Mr. Universe. And he talked about this in the sense of that people stop way too early because they're experiencing pain and they get afraid. And he always said to work through that pain. Or he said that people were experiencing adversity and difficulty in their life and people would stop. So he would say, just push forward. Or these people that say, oh, I need more sleep. And he's like, listen, especially when you're young, right? You, you don't need eight, nine, 10 hours of sleep. Just push through it, because that's what successful people do. These things should not stop you. And he would say that as a thing to get us going, such as, you know, even your own death should not even hold you back. You should still be moving forward. And I took that to heart. But as I was, uh, I wanted to do this show today, it started to turn into, uh, my feelings started moving towards the greatness of Muhammad Ali. Because I think him more than anybody else I could think of in this world proves this over and over. I mean, yes, Muhammad Ali was the greatest boxer who ever lived, but most of his best work was done after his boxing career. And his best work still lives on every single day. And I want to show that to you today. So let's start from the beginning. Muhammad Ali, he always called himself the greatest in terms of being the greatest boxer. But he was offended when he was considered to be only a boxer. He had a life mission. He used boxing because that was his talent. But he cared about much, much more than that. He promoted world peace, civil rights. He cared about hunger relief, interfaith relations, cultural understanding. He was a humanitarian. He stood up for what was right. And he stood up and he lived by his principles. And he did this throughout his whole life, no matter how much it cost him. Let's start with this. In 1960, Muhammad Ali, who was known as Cassius Clay at that point, he won the Olympics for the United States. And everybody thought he was great. And he was on TV and he was famous. And the Olympics in 1960 were in Rome. He comes back home, Olympic champion. He comes back home, his home is Louisville, Kentucky. He's a little hungry. He wants to go to a restaurant to get something to eat. Not in 1960, a black person can't get something to eat. They refused service to him. So on one sense, he's world famous and everybody loves him when he's entertaining them. But when he comes back, he's a black guy. And so he's not even allowed to eat in a restaurant in his hometown. So he promptly took his gold medal and threw it in the river, which is something I can't even imagine like any Olympic champion doing. That, that would be like the highlight of their whole life probably anybody's life, but he didn't care. He threw it away because he was standing up for his principles. You know, he fought for the United States and the United States can't even sit him down to eat a hamburger. In 1964, four years later, he became the world champion. In three years, he was undefeated up until that point from 64 to 67. Actually, from 60 to 67, he was undefeated, but he was champ from 64 to 67. He wasn't champ anymore after 1967. Why? Not because anybody beat him. It was because he was arrested, he was jailed, and he was stripped of the World Heavyweight Boxing title because he refused to go to Vietnam and fight in the war. And so, as history tells us, he was released from jail in 1970. But what people don't seem to mention is, is that when he went to jail in 1967, he was willing to give up his career because he saw no reason 
why the United States should be going fighting in Vietnam, especially black men, when they can't even go to a restaurant in the United States. So he gave up his career in his mind. He didn't think he would ever come back, but it didn't matter. Be that as it may, in 1970, uh, he was reinstated, and he ended up winning back the title in 1974. Now, he defended his title in 14 different countries. Why did he do this? Because according to Muhammad Ali, world champions don't see borders. He wasn't a United States champion and didn't just want to fight in L.A. or New York. He wanted to make sure that poor countries could see him and that those poor areas would gain millions of dollars by bringing a world heavyweight title to their place. So he fought in really off odd places like uh, Zaire, uh, Manila is another one. So he did this for, to help out the world, not just the United States. When he retired from boxing, he did not retire from helping people. Here's just a few of the things that he did. He provided over 230 million meals to feed the hungry. Some of these he hand-delivered. He provided over $1 million in medical aid to Cuba. He personally helped to free American hostages in Iraq and Iran. And he supported many charities, many foundations, and many causes. So sit back and relax a little bit, because I'm going to tell you what this one man did and how many causes. And this isn't even all of them. But this is some of the causes that Muhammad Ali was supporting throughout his career and still does support even though he's not with us anymore. The Ali Care Program, Andrea Bocelli Foundation, Athletes for Hope, Beat Bullying, Boys and Girls Clubs of America, Bonaconti Fund to Cure Paralysis, Celebrity Fight Night Foundation, Civil Rights, Cancer Society, Help USA, Human Rights Action Center, Homelessness, Fighting Hunger, Jeff Gordon's Children's Foundation, Keep Memory Alive, Michael J. Fox Foundation, the Make-A-Wish Foundation, Muhammad Ali Parkinson Center, the NAACP, Raise Money for Literacy Programs, Parkinson Society Maritime Region, Project ALS, Save the Children, Special Olympics, Hollyrod Foundation, the Miami Project, UNICEF, Watering Seeds Organization. It's, it's an amazing body of work that this guy has, and m most of the best stuff he did was outside of the ring. In 2005, he opened up the Muhammad Ali Center in Louisville, Kentucky, where he came from. And in it, he uses it to inspire people. And I'm going to read this through a little bit because I don't want to get any of it wrong. What he built was a 100,000 square foot cultural center. This cultural center features exhibitions regarding Ali's six core principles of confidence, conviction, dedication, giving, respect, and spirituality. Throughout his life, Muhammad Ali strived to be guided by these core principles in his quest to inspire people around the world, dedicating himself to helping others, being the best athlete he could be, and by standing up for what he believed in. Let me stop it right there for a second. The thing that I want to point out here, that the six core principles are achievable by every human being. You do not have to have God-given talent. You don't have to be born into a rich family. You don't have to do anything but make a decision to be a good person. And that's what I find inspiring. You don't have to have an 81 inch reach. You don't have to be super fast with great footwork and to be able to handle a punch. None of these things. Making the decision to be respectful, to be able to give, to have conviction in your life, dedication. These things are so achievable by everybody that it's impossible to say why you don't do it if you're not. And if you're not living up to this, you need to ask yourself why. One thing that interests me greatly about his cultural center is he says, 
here that one of the exhibits offers visitors the chance to explore their sense of self, explore others and purpose through an interactive terminal program. Visitors are encouraged to, to share what they are fighting for in the Generation Ali booths. So if you're still listening out there, these are three of the questions that I would, would have for you. Number one, are you living up to the six core principles? Again, confidence, conviction, dedication, giving, respect, and spirituality. Are you living up to those? That's number one. Number two, what are you fighting for in your life? What's your meaning and purpose? What's important to you? How are you gonna serve this world? And number three, how do you wanna be remembered? What's your legacy going to be? Well, being we're talking about Muhammad Ali today, Muhammad Ali was asked how he would like to be remembered. And this is what he said. He gave the recipe for life, and I, I want to share it with you. I think it's beautiful, I think it's important, and I think it's something that we should all strive to live up for, live up to. Ali's recipe for life. I would like for them to say, he took a few cups of love, he took one tablespoon of generosity, one pint of kindness. He took one quart of laughter, one piece of concern, and then he mixed willingness with happiness. He added lots of faith and he stirred it up well. Then he spread it and expanded it over a lifetime. And he served each and every deserving person he met. That was from Muhammad Ali. Even after Muhammad Ali's death in uh, June 5th, 2016, which we're coming up on the uh, five-year anniversary of that, Muhammad Ali's mission and his greatness is still with us and still moves forward every much, every bit as it did when he was alive. And that, I think, is trying to live the perfect life. And that's the idea for today's show. If you live life correctly, death should not stop you from your goals or your mission. I hope that was valuable for you today. My name is Joe Peroni. If you would like to subscribe, that would be nice. And if you could share this with other people, that would be great too. Thank you for listening. I will see you next time.